Hey YouTube, welcome back. The build that we've been playing here for the past couple days is awesome. It's been very, very enjoyable. We are a intelligence stacking, throwing attack speed, rogue with low life, blade dancer, none of that falcon nonsense. It is a spark charge build using the fragment of the enigma and juicing up our unique items with a whole bunch of LP because playing in Circle of Fortune is a lot of fun for finding your own items and getting those, uh, those pieces of gear. It is excellent all right so there's a lot of things to talk about for this particular character first of all we're scaling spell damage it's a little bit strange keep in mind that in 1.0 there was a new skill introduced in the uh, falconer mastery but we have access to it as a blade dancer it's called explosive trap explosive trap has a 60 percent chance with all four points backed into it to apply a spark charge on hit previous to 1.0 it said that it was a 100 percent chance to apply so what was me my build got nerfed before the 1.0 actually dropped which is very unfortunate. But it turns out 60% chance to apply, along with a little 10 to 12% from with Fragment of Enigma, is still enough to make a complete build. When we throw our Explosive Trap, we're throwing three Explosive Traps at a time. And what that means is each of those has a small AoE explosion. Each of those can apply a Spark Charge to the enemies in a pack of monsters. And all of those also re-trigger. We throw three uh, Explosive Traps at a time. And when they detonate, they also rearm and detonate a second time. So we're playing a Spark Charge build. What does that mean? Well, we're scaling intelligence. We want as much intelligence as possible. I think a very good benchmark for this character is 120 intelligence. That's like a couple of tier six modifiers, a couple of tier seven modifiers, maybe a pair of double intelligence boots, but I ended up not going for that for my particular build, but we can talk about those gearing options later on. We want as much intelligence as possible because intelligence gives us two flat lightning damage for spark charges per intelligence. It also gives us 4% increased damage, which is native to spark charges and it gives us ward retention. We're going low life. Falconer is the brand new hot sexy thing. We're not playing Falconer. We're playing a Blade Dancer. And the rationale for playing a Blade Dancer is that in the Blade Dancer Mastery, we have a node called Death's Door that gives us less damage taken at low health and crit chance while at low health. And the crit chance has a plus sign next to it, which means that it's additive. Skills have a base critical strike chance of 5. This means that our base critical strike chance is 29. And with just a tiny bit of increased critical strike chance, we can cap our crit at 100 really easily. So remember that we also have crit vulnerability, which is kind of like... Um, it's kind of like the cap is 80 instead of the cap is 100 for capping your crit. But for itemization, we're even using items that have a ton of flat critical strike chance on them which means that we uh, can cap our crit very, very easily if my items stop being bugged and I could hover my mouse over them for you. Excellent. So at 250, you can critical strike chance from our peak of the mountain here. So we're a low life build. We're tanky. We are much tankier than I thought we were going to be. Um, comparing this to something like a Sentinel, I like to call out this node here for like uh, less damage taken while moving. This is approximately equal to the less damage taken from nearby enemies that Sentinel has in their base mastery. One of them is conditional, but it's higher. One of them is lower, but it's more consistent. So like that's the kind of thing that I would compare when it comes to like Sentinel versus anything else. And in addition to this, like no, we're not a block based build, but we do generate dust shrouds when holding down right click and throwing our explosive traps. For us, that means that we oftentimes generate... Oh, this is funny. They're only going up to 10. Let's see if we can try better over here. There, maybe this one. While we are clearing our echoes, we oftentimes have like 60 or maybe 70 dust shrouds. And if I open up the character sheet, you see that my dodge chance is about 83%, which is what I would refer to as capped dodge. This is a lot of dodge. We gain dust shrouds from our explosive trap node. This node called smoke traps. We scale throwing attack speed. We throw basically six of them at a time. And we have relevant sources of percent increased critical strike, or sorry, increased dodge. We have some dodge in our mastery, and we'll even craft just a tiny bit of percent increased dodge rating on our amulet as well. And with all that flat dodge that comes in from dust shrouds, because remember, dust shrouds, each one of them adds 50 flat dodge rating and 5% chance to receive a glancing blow. So speaking about defenses, we have less damage taken from Death's Door. We have the generic stuff here, less damage taken while moving, with a nice agile playstyle. We have cat glancing blows coming in from all of our um, dust shrouds that we're generating. We're capped dodge at about 83%. And we have about 5.8. Depending on your gear, maybe you'll have 4,000 ward, which I feel is a little bit low, so I tried to get more than 4,000 ward. But while you're playing Echoes, you might see yourself jump up to like maybe maybe 8,000 ward because we have some extra, extra ways of generating ward when we get hit. And then on top of that, for our defenses, 
We even have things like an iframe off of shift that we spec into invulnerable while shifting. We have some extra percent increased armor coming in from shift, uh, procking our shurikens, giving us extra armor here. And we have things like silver shrouds that we gain from smoke bomb, which we can use at will. And we also gain smoke bombs from the blade dancer mastery. So that's a quick review of the defenses. I wanted to call those out immediately because this build ended up being a lot tankier than I thought it was going to be. I'm very impressed with how this, uh, how tanky this character is. The things that I've died to are reading Twitch chat while looting items while standing in a poison pool. Because our mitigation against damage over time is approximately as low as my mitigation against Twitch chat. And also um, ailments. So uh, an ailment like uh, like a huge stack of ignite, if I'm not paying attention, I might just die to it. A fire thrower or like a flamethrower that I'm just standing in while I'm reading Twitch chat. Yeah, I'm probably just going to die to it. My Twitch chat res is pretty low. Hopefully your Twitch chat res is a little bit higher than mine. Maybe you don't even have Twitch chat to interact with, but that's you, not me. Uh, other things to talk about this build for offenses. We talked about the flat damage, the percent damage, the crit chance, crit multi stuff. There's not much else that we use to jack up our, our damage, but we do get to use the Mad Alchemist Ladle. There's been some discussion on this character, like, should we stack up Strength instead? Should we go Intelligence, like, Strength, like, you know, get, get the Cleaver Solution going on in there? The basic difference between these two things is um, the percent more damage multiplier. So this is 48% more damage off a of Mad Alchemist Ladle, and a Cleaver Solution is only going to give you 15% more damage. If I built strength instead of building intelligence, I was end up with higher armor values. But you see that my armor is about 2,000 right here, which ends up being about 35% armor. Because remember, I'm standing in a level 47 zone, not in level 100 zone. So those numbers are slightly disingenuous. Look at the flat number. Don't look at the percent number. Um, so what? This build's awesome. Uh, we're going to talk about the skills themselves so you can recreate this for yourself. What I should say, before we talk about skills... I, I'm gonna put this as like a disclaimer in the in the description as well. This build is has been one of the most rancid gearing experiences that I've ever experienced in all of Last Epoch. It's it's just awful. If you want to play this character, you need to do one of two things. You need to either be in Merchant's Guild. That's it. It's easy as that. <laughs> or you could craft all of the gear ahead of time before you start leveling this character. Do not do what I did and level this character and try to ca craft the gear as you level this character. The rationale for this recommendation and for why my gearing experience was as atrocious as it was is that as a rogue, you literally cannot craft intelligence on your gear. For those of you wondering about Cleaver Solution, why not just go Strength instead? You'll be happy to know that you literally cannot craft Strength on your gear. So, for your class-specific pieces of gear, your helmet, your body armor, and your relic, you cannot get Exalted Intelligence or Exalted Strength. You also will never find it on the ground, which means you need to farm up on a different character sources of Exalted Intelligence. Or you can just try to be really lucky and find non-class-specific bases that have Intelligence on them, because technically you can do that. But again, that's kind of rancid. So what I did to level up or to gear up my character is I went to play a warlock instead. And on my warlock, I farmed until I found exalted intelligence. And then I crafted it. I LP'd it onto my peak of the mountain. And then I swapped back to this character and I put it on. And then I farmed up a exalted intelligence chest piece on my warlock. And then I LP'd it onto an exsanguinous. And then I came back to my rogue and I put it on. And that's what I did for all of these. And it was so stupid. I understand why, uh, why EHG does it. They're like, oh, we don't want rogues to get intelligence on their gear by accident while they're leveling because intelligence doesn't scale them at all. And we want the, the leveling experience for brand new players not to be clouded with intelligence on their gear that doesn't help them. I understand. I just disagree with it. And I think it's dumb. I think there are better solutions because this has been atrocious, especially considering that we even have new intelligence synergies in the rogue mastery. And we literally have spar charges that in like necessitate us having Fragment of the Enigma, which requires us to stack intelligence. So craft the gear ahead of time. Don't do what I did. Let's talk about the skills here and see what makes this character tick. We already said that we were going to have three traps thrown. With Explosive Trap, we have one, two, three, the Lightning, the Cold Conversion, and the Trap Us node. That means that every time we right-click, we throw down three traps. Every time those detonate, because of the three nodes in Trap Sprinkler and the one node in Automated Bombardment, you will automatically have them, boop, rearm and shoot again. 
Another thing to know is that this is only a 60% chance to apply spark charges, so sometimes you literally won't deal damage. I have not seen that happen. I would not concern myself with it, but it is a funny anecdote to call out because I think it's humorous. We're going to grab all of the um, minus mana cost, all of the mana efficiency over here, because remember, spark charges are a little bit like shadow daggers. They do not inherit more multipliers from the skills that apply them unless explicitly stated otherwise. So we don't care about any kinds of more multipliers in Explosive Trap. We just take all quality of life, AoE, rearming, um, dust shrouds, just all QOL stuff all around. One point up here for Trap Uche, which aside from having an adorable name, makes the build awesome. It reminds me of like all the times that I played traps playing Path of Exile. This node is so, so funny. You have these little head crabs. You throw down your traps, and as they explode, they create additional traps on the ground, and the traps that are created will hurl themselves toward enemies, which is just the best quality of life that I never knew that I wanted while I was playing Path of Exile in the past. This node is amazing. It's so cute, and it reminds me of little head crabs launching themselves onto the enemy. Let's talk about the next damaging skill here, uh, Umbra Blades. Umbra Blades, believe it or not, is a relic of how I leveled up this character because I was leveling up with um, Shadow Daggers before I swapped over to playing Spark Charges around level 48, when, or sorry, 46, when I got my Fragment of the Enigma. Umbra Blades, I don't think there's anything better that you could put here instead. You could technically spec into Decoy, and that's fine. But the reason that Umbra Blades has remained in this build is twofold. One, it, uh, it, uh, it it's a thing that hits, and having a thing that sits on the ground and hits, even though I'm literally only procking it off of my shift, means that I can apply all sorts of ailments. Things like um, percent chance to uh, shred, like lightning shred or armor shred, chill, shock, slow, uh, all those kinds of things. Just having things that hits is useful. The other thing that's uh, worthwhile for counting out for Umbral Blades is that, remember that we were talking about dust shrouds a moment ago, and we're generating like maybe 80 dust shrouds on single target, something like that. I got 64 right here, but I guess I can pop my smoke bomb. And smoke bomb is going to give me a few more sources of uh, uh, dust shroud for a second. And then, like, if I get hit, I'll generate some more. So we got 80, 81, 82 right there. So 80, 81, 82 with this node in number of blades gives us um, 80 times 8. That's not how the math works. 80, 80 times 80 times 80 times 8. Is that really 640? I think it is. And then it doubles when you're inside smoke bomb. What I'm trying to say is that even though we're not a spell, or sorry, even though we're not a throwing damage build, we still have a absolutely massive more multiplier on Umbra Blades, and having it just sit on the ground and hit things is insane. Even if you wanted to retool this build to also apply Shadow Daggers, remember, Shadow Daggers do not uh, gain the more multiplier from this node. So this is like just there for ailments, if you're playing Bleed or Poison or something, or for like, hit crit umbra blades not with respect to shadow daggers we are really taking advantage of this even though it's kind of secondary to our primary source of damage with the spark charges for the rest of the build we're kind of rounding out with generic looking stuff shift i took the ailment cleanse on the far left side because i did not get cleanse on my belt if you have cleanse on your belt i would just skip this note over here and i would spec into the kill threshold in the top middle of shift otherwise we have the uh, the iframe we have shurikens. We have this node, which is an absolute all-star because it generates ward when we're below half health. And we're playing a low life exsanguinous build. So we're, or sorry, mana when we're below half health. And we're always below half health because we're a low life exsanguinous build. We have these points over here, uh, proccing Shadow Cascade. And the benefit of that is that when your shadow is consumed, it immediately drops that umbral blade be uh, behind you. So my play style for single target damage is basically to hold down right click. And then whenever my shift is off cooldown, I, uh, I let it rip so to speak, and I put another Beyblade on top of the enemy. The next thing to talk about is Shurikens. This is very boring stuff, but we uh, we pick up Shock Chance here. So this applies a whole bunch of Shock. Remember, Shock is a um, Lightning Res debuff on the enemies, so it's a nice way of juicing up a damage. It also makes it easier to stun enemies. We have all the Duration, the Armor here, and Piercing to round it out. Very generic way of specking your Shurikens. In Smoke Bomb, again, it's very generic. We're taking Dust Shroud Frequency, which gives us damage on the Umbra Blades, I guess. But it also just makes us even tankier because it scales up our flat dodge and it caps our glancing blows. We have Duration. We have da uh, Mitigation against damage over time coming in from our Crimson Shrouds. And then we have a Silver Shroud on demand along with a little extra source of Cleanse because Cleanse is a great thing to have in your build. So those are the five skills. Let's talk about our Mastery real quick. Remember, I leveled up this build by using Shadow Daggers because Shadow Daggers are OP OP. Um, we have Throwing Attack Speed, Glancing Blows, 
We have damage reduction along with haste. And I put one point into twin blades because I was testing out something off stream and I forgot to unspec it. This point obviously does nothing for you. Whoops. In the falconer skill tree, we were putting a bunch of points in here in order to grab the extra throwing attack speed. And it's relevant that we have a tiny bit of mana regen and like there's a little percent dodge rating. I grabbed this node in particular when I was like level 90 or so because I just didn't have other things to be specking into. And having so much flat dodge means that percent dodge ends up being a valuable stat for us. So this is not an important node, but around level 90 or so, I started specking into it. Uh, you'll note that because we are an intelligent stacking spell damage build, there's very few nodes that we actually get to take advantage of. So <clears throat> you're going to see some nodes like once where it's technically just there because it's dodge rating. If you got hit recently, uh, we're using this node because we need to build up to the top half of the skill tree. There's a lot of things here that we just don't get to use. However, a tiny, get of, a tiny bit of extra throwing attack speed is useful to us. Eight and eight for defenses is useful here as well. Five points for movement speed there. On top, we get these silver shrouds. Putting all 10 points in this does not give us 10 guaranteed dodges. Remember, when you would take a hit, it consumes all stacks of this, and it grants you 100 ward per stack. So every 15 seconds, we generate 10 stacks of silver shrouds. When an enemy hits us, we lose all 10 stacks, we guarantee dodge, and we gain 1,000 ward. Which for someone with like six or 7,000 ward is a really convenient thing to have. That's on a 15 second cooldown. It's adorable. You put 10 points in here because there's basically nothing else to take. But even then, it is quite good. And I'm like very happy with how this has played out. It's one of the advantages of playing low life here, right? We have one point in crit chance because we don't need crit chance because we crit cap so, so easily. But five points into crit multi here. We again, like you realize we don't really have a lot of good things to spec into. But we also get some armor shred chance and armor shred effect. We have some frailty chance and mana generation because again, not much else to spec into. And then we have eight points into Death's Door, which is really the entire reason for us playing Blade Dancer instead of playing something like Falconer instead. Less damage taken while at low health. This is not the same as Endurance. This does work with Ward. This is very similar to the node called Berserker in the base Primalist class. So this rewards us for being an Exsanguinous low life build with Ward. The plus 24 crit chance, it's additive. It means it's insanely easy to get critical strike chance. Um, let's talk about our gear real quick. I mentioned previously at the very beginning of the video talking about the Magical Miss Ladle. Um, yeah, mine has a lot of text on it, but it seems like these things with one or two LP are pretty easy to find. Just as much crit multi, spell damage, lightning damage. Those are the kinds of things as the implicit that you're looking for there. For our catalyst, for the uh, up until like level 97, I had zero LP on it. I just recently got a nice upgrade here, but the relevant text is just the... Um, the fact that it adds plus two damage for spark charges per intelligence, and you'd like to have a good roll on that AoE. It rolls between 120% increased AoE and 240% AoE. So that's just about all we're using it for. It is relatively easy to get this with one LP. I had trouble getting this with two LP because I'm a very unlucky person. Hopefully you have a three LP because you can be luckier than I am. Um, we talked about the need for intelligence. That's definitely our most important stat. So intelligence on our helmet, intelligence on our body armor, intelligence on our off on our relic down here. Um, for our boots, you're using one of two things. You are using either a okay. So like obviously you could use like a, an exalted thing until you get a nice LP upgrade, but as much intelligence as possible. For our uh, unique items, you can do something that I would call a double intelligence boot. There's two good candidates for this. One is Telefoon's Mirage, and the other one is Blood of the Exile. Both of them have intelligence on them, and you can LP more intelligence onto them. So for example, I'm at 122 intelligence. With this, I go to 130 intelligence. So I ended up trimming some intelligence for my build because I wanted another source of health lost, uh, sorry, missing health gained as ward per second. And I felt like this was a uh, an appropriate number for me floating around 5.5k, 6k, depending on like whether we're in combat, whether we're getting hit, things like that. For your gloves, these are definitely the most interesting slot for us because there's some fancy stuff you can do. For a long time, I was using these gloves, which is just like a pretty pretty mid-tier pair of gloves. It has an exalted stat on it, which is current health, losses ward per second. These are experimental affixes. They only drop from the exiled mage. So if you're playing this build, if you're interested in playing this build, you should definitely be killing all the exiled mages that you find looking for gloves that have these affixes on them. 
So what we'd like to have is actually three prefixes. We'd like to have intelligence, which is a great prefix. We'd like to have this current health losses of ward per second, which is a great prefix for scaling our ward and effective HP. And then we also want throwing attack speed. So eventually upgraded to these instead, which kind of have the best of all worlds. It's only tier four uh, health loss per second and missing health gains ward per second. It's only tier four. You could technically get a better one, but I also wanted that intelligence there. I put up a video on YouTube talking about actual crafting and how to use experimental affixes. Check my YouTube channel for a recent video that was posted in uh, late, or I guess early March, and you'll see the uh, the video that uh, that talks about how to make a pair of gloves like this. So you can use your glyphs of research, your runes of insight, and you don't even have to use a despair, but having something like this you can basically deterministically do it using a insight calculator that is hosted on Tunk Lab's website. Um, for, our, uh, for our rings, there's another three, three prefix problem that we need to solve. We want a prefix that's tier one, which is the minus three attack mana cost. So we're going to seal that at tier one because we don't care about the damage number going up. We just care about the minus three. On top of that, we want the exalted intelligence and as much throwing attack speed as possible. So I have tier six intelligence, tier five throwing attack speed. And then for this ring, we have tier seven intelligence, the same sealed uh, minus mana cost. And then I only got tier three throwing attack speed on this one here. Um, talking about some other, I guess we'll talk about two more items here before we move on to idols. The first is the amulet. Mine's garbage, but it happens to have that throwing attack speed um, Throwing attack speed implicit, along with as much crit multi as possible. You do want percent dodge on the amulet. For the rest of the affixes, just round out whatever you need. Whatever, like, like if you can fit more armor shred in the build, sure. If you need some resistances, go ahead and do that. But the other implicit should obviously be um, percent damage, either spell or lightning, even lightning penetration, instead of minion health. There's no minion in the build. It's just the best thing I got. It's garbage. The last thing to talk about here is the relic. I ended up using this because it happened to have 3 LP and I wanted to gamble on it. I think ideally you'd use something like Stormcarve Testament. It gives you even more shock chance. It gives you some lightning penetration, some flat damage. Uh, it has fizz res on it too, which is pretty convenient. This thing is a real pain in the ass to farm. And I'm not even sure that it's strictly better than a Grimoire. And a Grimoire is a much easier item to get with two or even three or sometimes even four LP on it. So it has vitality, which helps us. It has um, less damage taken for Necrotic, Void, and Poison, which is wonderful because those are things that often come in damage over time, and we like all of that. Um, and then it also gives us plus 30 necrotic damage to spells. So we're not scaling necrotic damage, but we are scaling percent increased damage off of our intelligence, and we are scaling crit chance crit multi. This is a non-zero source of damage here, and it's also, again, just very easy to get this with multiple sources of LP. And the real big thing you care about is just getting tier 7 intelligence on this. Everything else just ends up bougie as you continue leveling up your character. For idols, there aren't really good idols for you, which mean that you can kind of use them to cover your resistances or to get as much um, health into your character as possible. As you um, as you level up your character, I think the best things are probably just these. This is a uh, one by three idol with percent health and elemental resistance suffix. Having a bunch of these along with some idols that have like health or like percent health, flat health, percent health, flat health, percent health, flat health, like those hybrid HP one by two idols. Just getting as much HP as possible means you're going to have as much war generation as possible because of the Exsanguinous mod, Last Seven Living, and your gloves. So having as much HP as possible in your idols is good, but you got to use them to cover your resistances because you need res, even though I'm very unlucky. So there's that. The last thing to talk about here is the blessings. Let's take a look at this view here. I hate this view. Let's take a look at this view here in the end of time. Uh, the blessings that we care about most are one, two, three around the right side. And then the two level 90 monoliths on the top. So let's talk about those. We want crit multiplier from our Black Sun. Remember, we're crit grilled, and we'd like to have as much crit multi as possible. We are a lightning damage build, so I do think that you want as much lightning shred as possible coming in from the storm. You could technically use this for a defensive mod if you want to like ward decay threshold and ward per second, but I think the damage is uh is more relevant here. For your reign of dragons. Reign of Dragons for me is basically used for one of two reasons, either all resistance or crit avoid. I ended up gearing my particular character here with reduced bonus damage taken from crits with 42% here and only 17% here. But I think that's sufficient for my uh, my tankiness. Um, because remember, monsters don't get crit multi in Last Epoch. So even like 70 or 80% reduced damage taken from crits, I think is enough. Um, obviously, you'd like to have 100, but you know, say la vie. 
So I have 20 all res coming in from this because technically it's a better option and I hit it. So, you know, when you get 20 all res, you take the 20 all res. From our Spirits of Fire and Age of Winter, we'd like to get as much armor as possible because there's nothing else here that we're particularly interested in. We have percent armor scaling coming from our shift rocking our shurikens. So going with that, having the extra flat armor from Spirits of Fire is wonderful. And then the percent armor from this is just icing on the cake, getting us up to about 40% armor once you're done gearing your character. It kind of makes up for the fact that we're using an Exsanguinous that has 32 armor which is laughably low compared to things like the Sentinel body armor that had 700, but you know, you work with what you've got. So that is a rundown of the skills, the mastery, the gear, idols, uh, some of the gearing options when it comes to LP stuff, and the blessings. The last thing that I want to mention is these two particular items, along with like the low life stuff with Arc Sanguinous. One of the reasons that I've enjoyed playing this character so much, aside from like having dream clear speed, being a fun build to talk about, having a really enjoyable um, play style, and it just happens to be spark charges, and I love spark charges. Uh, one of the reasons that I've enjoyed this character so much is that it's a low life character that doesn't feel like garbage to gear. It it, okay, it it does. It does feel like garbage to gear because of the intelligence thing, because they were rogue, you can't put intelligence into gear, but I like that it's really just as simple as putting on the Exsanguinous and then dealing with potions. That's all you gotta do. When I was playing a Warlock build, I found that my my Chaos Bolts and my Thonic Fissure were generating so much life gain on hit. And like, you can turn off your leech, but you can't turn off life gain on hit without just gearing your character in a weird way. Or like, specking your skill tree in a weird way. And it's it's really convenient, and I like it, that you just put on the Exsanguinous. You put on something that converts your potions into ward instead. Either a Chain of Valeros, you could use an Exalted Belt that has that kind of modifier on as well. You could even use a Sathara's Conundrum instead, which converts your potion health to ward. As long as you have those two things, your build's functional. You'd like to have as much intelligence as possible. Maybe you want some extra sources of missing health gain as ward per second, like we ended up opting into here. But that's all you really need in order to begin taking advantage of the Death Door node in the Blade Dancer skill tree for all of your crit concerns and all of your damage mitigation concerns. So I, I really enjoyed how that came together. I think Chains of Valeris is a better choice than Zathara's Conundrum, because I think there's more affixes that you'd rather have in an amulet, including the throwing attack speed implicit modifier there. Especially, like, you could have armor shred, res, percent dodge, it's all very valuable, and then crit multi. So like, if you have a 4 LP, cool. You're luckier than me. Go do it. But this is how it worked out for us, and I found a couple uh, 2 and 3 LP Chains of Valeros, and this is the best one that we ended up rolling there. It's got a bunch of necrotic res, it's got damage on it, it's fine. I like this thing. So I think that about rounds it out. Again, if you're interested in playing this character, I think I would only ever play this as a Merchant's Guild character or as a character where you craft all of the gear ahead of time and then you start playing the character. Because I had a laughably awful time gearing up this character. <laughs> because I tried to gear up this character while playing this character, which it turns out is a mess. It's an absolute mess. But if you're looking for a new fun way to play Spark Charges, I would absolutely recommend this to you. Given the uh, the meta of what's going on in Last Epoch right now, where people are literally one-shotting Tier 4 Jeweler with Die Bomb as a Falconer, or they're generating 600,000 Ward, this build is fair. This build is not busted. I doubt it even has any bugs in it. It is just a fair build that has an appropriate amount of damage. If Last Epoch were balanced, I would call this build great and very fun and a very cool recommendation. However, given the uh, hoops that you have to jump through to, to gear the character, and the fact that it's just like, it's a fun build, I like it, but it's fair. Do you really want to play a fair build? Maybe you do. If you do end up playing this character, tell me how much you enjoy it, because I do like a good spark charge. It's one of my favorite things to do in all of Last Epoch, and having an additional uh, way of building spark charges off Explosive Trap has been just a joy to experiment with. Frankly, this build has massively overperformed. I kind of thought it was going to be garbage, especially considering that this node used to be 100% chance to apply spark charges on hit and then got nerfed down to 60 before 1.0 even launched. I had low expectations, but this build has massively overperformed. It's a fair build. It's a fun build. It's spark charges. And at some point in your life, if you've never played spark charges, play spark charges, whether it's this or something else.